The other day I was listening to the Savage Love Cast, which is this podcast where people call in looking for honest and frank sex positive advice about love and relationships. So I'm listening and this scientist calls in. And the scientist says that he's having a hard time dating because when he goes out on dates, he holds all of the statements of the women across the table from him to these high levels of scientific logic and reason. And I thought to myself, wow, this guy would hate dating me. It's my natural tendency to jump from one extreme to another. And because of that, I tend to be prone to statements of illogical hyperbole or the opposite, like illogical hypoboly? I mean, I guess I don't exactly know what the word is, but you catch my drift. I regularly say things like, this is the best lasagna I've ever had, or that is the absolute worst movie I have ever seen. <laughs> I have always been like this. When I was a kid, my sister wrote a song about me, and it went like this. First you're laughing, then you're crying. What? The heck is wrong with you? <laughs> and she was right. This is how I have always been. These days, I do a lot of yoga, and one of the things that my yoga has taught me is how to not be this way, how to not be all in one direction or all in the other, how to not overdo it, whatever it is in that moment. So I went to school for social work. And my first job out of college was in child protection. And child protection is super intense. It requires you to be completely in control at all times. You need to control your mind, your body, your emotions, your instincts, completely in control at all times. And after about two years in the field, I began to feel as if the job itself was taking control of my soul. I felt like it was sucking my soul away entirely. And it's not like I was going from laughing to crying anymore. I was just sad. Like, I was just crying all of the time. And I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So I tried to remember the last time that I was really happy, and my mind drifted to the five weeks that I had spent studying abroad in Guatemala. And so I thought, let's do the extreme thing here. Let's join the Peace Corps. So I did. From 2007 till 2009, I served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Ecuador. And when people would ask me why I joined, I would say that I felt as though my entire life had been painted yellow, and I wanted to see what purple looked like. So of course I started to go to the extremes with this new purple paint all over my life. I wanted so desperately to have like the real Peace Corps experience. I wanted to live in the jungle or in some remote village with this like group of indigenous people that were completely disconnected to society. And I wanted to be so deeply attached to them that my sweat would become their sweat. But what I got was a site placement in the city of Guayaquil. Guayaquil is this huge, bustling city. It has an elaborate public transportation system. It has strip malls, luxury. It was larger than my two hometowns in Wisconsin put together. There was a Pizza Hut and a McDonald's within walking distance of my apartment. And in Ecuador, that was super fancy. And that was not what I wanted. I wanted to be the exact opposite of who I had been. I'd been working a good job for the government in Wisconsin. I was earning a good amount of money, and because I lived in Green Bay, my rent was wicked cheap, and all of my excess money went to things that I did not need. So I needed to live in the exact opposite way of that. I needed to feel like I was suffering. So it began with a heated shower. Now, most homes in Ecuador do not have hot running water. To get a heated shower, you connect this, like, plastic electric box to your shower head and in a way that can also cause you to be electrocuted you run your water through that plastic box and it comes out warm on the other side and since it's not something that everybody had I decided that it was a luxury and so I decided that I would live without it my hypothesis was this if I lived a life that was the exact opposite of the life that I had previously been living I would somehow learn how life was meant to be lived and so I couldn't possibly do that if I was taking hot showers. I would need to take cold showers. But for the first five months that I was in the country, Peace Corps placed me in these host homes that had hot showers. 
And I was certain that with every drop of warm water that hit my skin, I was somehow missing out on this life lesson that I was supposed to be figuring out. I was somehow blinding myself of the purple that I was trying to see. So when I moved into my own apartment, I refused to install an electric shower. And I went to the extremes with this in denying myself any kind of casual comfort that was readily accessible to me. I had no couch, no table, no spatula, no mop, and I was like, yeah, look at me, <laughs> living without these things, living against the elements, look at me dashing in and out of my cold shower, I am figuring life out. So that got old really fast. I, it began to occur to me that maybe Peace Corps had placed me in this particular site against my wishes, perhaps for a reason. So I went out and I bought a cheap futon to use as a couch and I made myself a table. I even made myself a mop out of cut up pillowcases and I bought myself a spatula so that my grilled cheese sandwiches would stop being poked and prodded with a fork every time I tried to flip them over. But as the months dragged on, I refused to buy an electric shower. I just could not give up on this theory that I had and I missed warm showers. I would go to hardware stores and like fawn over the, the electric shower heads. I would like pet them in the aisles and reminisce about the times when I used to enjoy bathing myself. I did this for a year and then I finally gave in. My electric shower head cost me a whopping $9. And the women in the barrio where I was working applauded me for finally making this purchase because despite the fact that their homes were sometimes like shacks on stilts in the river, none of them would ever imagine taking cold showers every day the way that I had been forcing myself to do. Now around the same time, my fridge went on the fritz. By on the fritz, I mean that it was totally not working at all. Basically, I was living on the equator, putting perishable foods into a sealed hot box and calling it a fridge for about two months. <laughs> The milk was going, the milk was lukewarm and the fruit started to go bad. The freezer wouldn't make ice anymore, but I ignored all of this. I refused to invest another penny into a luxury item that was totally frivolous for my home. And it's not like it was all the way broken, right? And besides that, I had already lived a luxe yellow life of refrigerated foods. And now was the time for me to learn how to live differently. So I just learned to live with it for two months until one day I woke up in the morning and I thought to myself, the fridge died last night. So I went down to my kitchen and I found that the fridge was not even pretending to be turned on anymore. It wasn't even making that humming noise that tells you that it's on. And when I opened the door, like warm air actually came out onto my face. And I thought, aha, I knew that the fridge had finally died because I am more in tune with my surroundings. This is a magical power that clearly I gained after a year of cold showers and flipping grilled cheese sandwiches over with a fork. My hypothesis has proved correct. But deep down, I knew the truth. In this year of trying to see what purple looked like, what I really learned is that my world will take on the tint of whatever glasses through which I look at it. It's not about living yellow or trying to see the purple. It was about trying to see me, accepting me for who I am, all of my hues, the luxurious ones and the less luxurious ones, being better connected to who I really am. You don't get anything by keeping yourself away from everything. You don't get to you by keeping yourself away from you. And really, it's not like I somehow magically knew that the fridge was broken. I probably just smelled the rotting food wafting its way up to my bedroom. So the fridge broke and I finally gave in. Two guys came over in this counterfeit LG truck and they took my fridge away. They came back two days later, we plugged it in and it started to make that familiar fridges running humming sound. And I decided to go out on a limb, go crazy, throw some water in the ice cube tray, toss it in the freezer and see what happens. So the next morning I wake up and I find 10 beautiful round frozen ice cubes in the freezer. My fridge could once again make ice and I could once again indulge in the luxury that is a glass of ice water just after a hot shower. Because like I said, 
I like to go from one extreme to the next. Thank you. Teresa Okoken. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa.